it's late i'm tired <laughs> there is no way i can fix any of this um but it is a little after midnight and i just cut off my computer um from work today um and i just wanted to share with you a thought that i had as i closed the lid uh, to my laptop and walked away for the night. I am tired. I've been literally working all day with the exception of having to make a um, unexpected run to the pet store to get Bailey some food because the food that I bought a little while, uh, a little while back on sale was rancid. And that's a whole nother story for another day. So I had to make, um, you know, I had to make a run to pick up some some more food. But beyond that, I've pretty much been head in all day long. Um, and I thought as I shut off my computer, like, wow, if I was working for a client or for a corporation, first of all, I would not have been doing that. I would have shut down my computer. I've learned a long time ago, especially when you work in contract work where you're being paid by the hour to um, honor yourself and honor your hourly rate by ensuring that you give the eight hours a day, 40 hours a week or whatever the, um, you know, whatever has been stipulated in your statement of work, your SOW, or in your contract, you know, with your client and or if you're doing W-2 work through another organization, because you really play yourself when you do more than the eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, because you're not going to be paid for it. And if, uh, you know, you have to have any overtime work has to be agreed upon beforehand. Um, so you really want to be disciplined and it's sometimes challenging when you're doing that work, because if you have a personality like mine, if I get in a flow, I don't want to break it. I want to continue on and do it because sometimes when your flow is interrupted, it's difficult to get back into it. So I'd rather just keep on working, right? But I learned a long time ago that in order to ensure the integrity of my rate, I had to be disciplined and give the hours stipulated. No more, no less. So, but tonight in doing work for myself um, and closing my computer and walking away, though I'm fatigued, I am satisfied. I am, I feel good. When I say I feel good, I mean the energy. I feel good about the work I'm doing. I feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing exactly what I've been called to do. And I don't mind putting in the work. And so as I was getting ready for bed, you know, I told you already that I look crazy. Um, but as I um, was preparing for bed, I thought, let me share this because I think this is important based on the emails that I get um, and the comments that are made under videos and all of those things um, about investing in you. And I've talked about this before by way of certifications and education and starting where you are and getting, you know, experience where you can and all of that. But I want to say, and I've talked about seed time and harvest as well, but I want to say that you have to be willing to invest in yourself even beyond the money. You know, I have certifications that I've, I've gone to and classes that I've taken and so forth and so on. And it took, yes, it took me going to the class. It took me my level of engagement and participation. But you also have to be willing to put it in practice if you can't. Um, you know, if you can't find what you're looking for or you don't have um, somewhere formal to exercise and practice 
what you and apply what you've learned that you have to be willing to go that extra mile to apply it for yourself and if you can't afford to do a certification program and, and things that we've discussed before i've talked about books and and self-development let me just share this with you many not many <laughs> A couple, not even a couple, that's a lie. Okay, a while back, y'all, a while back, I um, self-published uh, my books. Okay, so I started with, uh, obviously I started with one book. And I remember that um, I was going to Disney World, recently divorced, going to Disney World with my then toddler. And I went to a, you know, store, retail, computer store with my father. I've been working on my book and, um, you know, my dad is an you know, entrepreneur to his, you know, trusted, tried and true to his bone, a pilot, a uh, former, um, elected official politician and a former entrepreneur having owned seven business, uh, seven shoe stores across our state. So my dad is, you know, an old school type, um, hustler mentality, you know, get get it done type guy, right? Type of guy. And so he was very excited to see me, you know, walking in his footsteps, just like I did with politics, you know, deciding I wanted to embark on writing a book and then being an entrepreneur in that area. So we went to this computer, to the store and we picked out a computer, we picked out a bag and we picked out software. Now you all know Software is a little different now because it works on subscriptions. But back in the day, you know, you buy your little software, came in a box, you had your, your disc and you would upload your program from the disc and, you know, perhaps the agreement would allow you to put it on or upload it, um, you know, a couple of times before you would kind of be locked out. That would be the extent of your license. So I said to my father very explicitly, because I was getting ready to go out of town, don't buy anything. Don't buy any." thing until I get back and he's like okay 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 I was like no no daddy like literally for real for real you can't buy anything because software can't be returned you know we may get 30 days on the computer to return it you know the bag all that jazz but not software software is a totally different beast so my dad said okay I'll wait till you get back I'm very pragmatic. I need to think things through. I like to have several different contingency plans. I like to think things through from the beginning to the end. And I'm a phase person. Like I like to, I'm not just jumping in a pool, right? I'm going to walk over to it. I'm going to assess it. I'm going to check the temperature of the wind. The wind. I'm going to do all of that. I'm going to stick my toe in. I'm going to determine, right, the level of risk. So I just needed time to go on this vacation, clear my head from my personal situation and really think and, and mainly hear from the Lord, right? I felt like God was already leading me um, on this journey. Um, and I, I already felt like God was leading me. I'll leave it at that because that's going to take me into another part, another um that may be time for another video. I'm not really sure. I don't know how long I want to do this tonight. But so we make this agreement. I call, I get home or no, I call while I'm on vacation just to check in all that, you know, let them know that I'm okay. My daughter is all right. We're having a good time, blah, blah, blah. So my dad says he has a surprise for me, right? I'm like, Daddy, you didn't you didn't go buy that stuff, right? And he's like, I got a surprise. When you get back, I got a surprise for you. I, I know, I know him, right? I know my father very well. I just was like, okay, I'm just very prayerful that perhaps he may have done something, but not, you know, made some purchases, but anything but the freaking software. I get home, the computer's there. The laptop bag is there and the software was there. The software was in design two. This is how long ago this was. It was in design two, but even at this time, it's in 2005, that software was a thousand dollars. 
so I had been writing my book. I had my book was about 200 pages. I've been writing it in Word. So I tried to, you know, download the software. I try to work in a software. It's like y'all going to a foreign land, looking at a foreign language. I don't understand anything. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm trying to watch the tutorial, the little videos that came, you know, way back when, you know, where YouTube was not an option. Googling, you know, something, you were running very little information on the, the World Wide Web wasn't even, you know, that old at that point, right? That mature, that robust that it, that it is now where you can go on and literally type in anything and find something, right? I was furious with my father. I mean, it was his money, but I was furious nonetheless because I said, please do not buy anything until I get home. I, again, am very, very practical. I didn't want him to spend the money if I couldn't be assured that I could get it done or that I could use it. I don't, that was a lot of money to be wasting in my mind. And so I called my father, I was very, 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 very upset with him. And I was like, this is why I told you not to buy it. I wish I could have been as calm as I was right now, but right now I'm tired and I'm older and I'm wiser and I'm a lot more tempered. Um, but I was not happy. And more than anything else, I think fear was really driving me because I knew it was an investment and I didn't, I just didn't want to squander money like that. Like I just didn't want to squander their money like that. And so thankfully, thankfully I belong to Jesus. Okay, everybody. Thankfully, I'm a woman of God. And even though I fall short, thank God that he is not like man. That when you cry out to him, God will still answer. He is still faithful. And God has always been in my relationship with him and encourager. So I thank God for that, even in hindsight. Um, but I went to bed that night after I called and, you know, crying and screaming and losing my mind. And I just was like, God, help me, you know, help us basically went to sleep. And in my sleep, God showed me, I had a dream where I hit two buttons on my keyboard, right? Two buttons on my keyboard, one after the other, at my document started to spool out over the screen. At the time I was working a split shift job. So I would go in in the morning and then I was would come home for the afternoon and then I would have to go back in the evening. That was a split shift. So that morning I got up and I felt, I wasn't as hopeless, you know, like I wasn't buoyed. Like I wasn't like, okay, good. Today's another day, I'll try it again. I was still like a little like, oh my God. What are we, what am I going to do? What are we going to do? But I was like anxious to get home for my split shift so I could try what I saw in my dream. So I went to work. I came back home. I cut on my computer. I sat in my bed with my legs crossed in Indian style with the computer on my lap. And I hit the two buttons. And oh my God. Even thinking about it now makes me emotional my entire document, just like my dream, spooled out page after page after page after page. This whole time my, my cursor had been loaded, but I didn't know what it was. I wasn't familiar with this software. I didn't know what the freak a loaded cursor was, right? And I, when I watched that document go from page to page to page to page to page to page, I couldn't do nothing but, you know, praise God, praise. I was just speechless. But after that, I knew, I knew that God was with me. I mean, there's always been times in my life that knew God was with me. But in that moment, I knew that in that endeavor with that book, God was with me. And every time, every time I had an issue with that software, you know what I did? I would close my computer. I would pray about it, I would go to bed, and then I would dream the resolution. And the next day I would go to work and I couldn't wait to get back with my split shift so that I could do what I saw in my dream. And every single time, 
every time. It would be exactly as it was in my dream. Everything would come to fruition. And so I say all this with you tonight because I've been head in on book work. I haven't worked on my publishing company in years. Years. I started my company in 2005. It's 2023. And I'm right back in that program. You know what's so crazy? Is that that program I told you was in design too. I got it in 2005. And with my daughter being a photography major, she has the creative cloud now that it's morphed into more than, you know, almost 20 years after the fact, or no, no, almost 25 years, almost 20 years after the fact. And I'm looking at this thing again and I'm like, oh my Lord, now what am I supposed to do with this? How did I do that again? I have to relearn everything again. But you know one thing God showed me in 2005 with that software? And every time that I've been, I've worked on projects where I've learned about a program on my own, never seen it before, ServiceNow, never saw it before, um, SAP, never saw it before, is that God is faithful. And if you, faith without works is dead. If you press in and you seek the Lord and you ask the Lord and you do the work, he is faithful. So sometimes you have to, you all the time, you have to invest in yourself, whether it be your financial resources, whether it's just your, you know, your work ethic and your tenacity and your perseverance, you have to press in. Nothing is going to come easy. We have to work for everything. And guess what else? What I'm learning is, I told you that was 2005 and we're 2023, is that it takes time. Honest to God, if somebody would have told me 20 years ago, yeah, it's going to happen, but you got to wait 20 years, I'd have been like, ah, never mind, abort, abort. I'm going to find something else because we want things like this. We want things now. And that's just not the way that life happens. That's not the way that things occur. You have to give time, even in manifestation and all of that, you have to allow the time for things to come about, to manifest, to come to fruition. And what I'm learning now, and I think it's just like, again, I, I just think it's age and, and just having lived longer. I can, you know, you think about your elders and your ancestors and, and the people, your mentors and coaches that you've had, the mothers of the church. You know why they could just be like, baby, it's going to be okay. Because they live life. They live long enough to know that it's going to be all right. They've lived through enough situations to know that, yeah, this is going to pass, right? They've, they've had those experiences. And a lot of times we haven't had those experiences yet. So I can tell you things about, you know, stick with the basics if you're looking at training. You know, be good to your constituents. Keep your word if you're talking about politics. I could talk about the importance of being able to write and to speak well, if I'm talking about to my students as a communications professor. You know why? Because I've had all of these experiences. I'm speaking from experience. And you too have experiences as well. But in the areas that you don't, you have to press in. You have to be willing to go through the valleys. I mean, there's just, the learning curve is not nice a lot of times, right? It's not straightforward. It's not, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's harrowing. Sometimes it's, you know, it, it, you feel like you're veering off the path just to come back. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. The things that I've been doing, I've been planting seed like a farmer for 20 years. I've been tilling the ground and pulling out weeds and, you know, just waiting for harvest, the harvest to come. And so I just wanted to say tonight that even though I'm tired, I am thankful. I am grateful. I am blessed and I have joy. I'm excited about the things that I'm working on. I'm excited to see the things that I thought that God was done with. I thought, you know, I had put a period in sentence and God was just putting a comma there. It was just a pause. 
There's a time for preparation. There's a time where we have to wait and there's a time that we have to be still. And it's a time for us to understand that, you know, in our humanity, we don't always understand it. We get impatient. I am by nature, by flesh, an impatient individual, but in my spirit, I'm grateful that there are times that I, that I am in tune with the Lord. I know, uh-uh, I got to pump my brakes. I got to slow down. And I just want to share that with you. But those of you who are out here trying to figure out what's the next step or trying to figure out, you know, if you've done something wrong or if you're on the right path or if you can't hear or if you're not sure, or if you're just tired and you're giving up, don't. Say a prayer and get some rest. You're on the right path. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be next week. It may not even be this year, but it's coming. You know, the thing about it is that you just don't know when. And I want you to realize that everything that you're doing now is equipping you for when it comes. So I'm going to bed, y'all. I'm tired, but I pray that this has blessed you and encouraged you. And um, I feel like it's, you know, I've been a little bit all over the place, but I just want to say that, you know, when you're operating in purpose and you're um you know being obedient and you're you're operating in your gifts it really is light you know it really it really is it really can be refreshing it everything doesn't have to be um arduous Everything doesn't have to be draining. And, and sometimes we really need to look at that. You know, I think about in particular my political life. And at one point it was really like, it was really, 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 really hard. It was really draining. It was really, you know, it was a thankless job. And I was really operating in few, uh, you know, and fumes at, a, at an empty, empty state. We have to be very careful because we always have to be sure that we are where we're supposed to be for the time that we're supposed to be there. Because while you're there, there's provision. And when you stay too long, you're not supposed to be somewhere but for a season and you, you know, try to make it forever, that's not going to work. That won't work. So, um, you know, more later on some of these things, I'll expand at another time, but I just wanted to say that to you that, you know, we have to hold on and, you know, keep doing what you're doing and get what you need to get from every season of life because every time the chapter closes, you know, a chapter ends doesn't mean that the book is over right? It's a journey. I mean, sometimes that season will end and something new will begin. But oftentimes it has been, um, while new, um, and ever changing, the theme is the same, right? The theme is the same because sometimes I found that seasons are building blocks they build on one another all right so i'll talk to you in my next video and i'd love to hear your thoughts and comments below if any of this resonated with you okay if you like you give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time i upload new content all right y'all see you in my next video